I'm Quinn, and this is Open Awareness Yoga. Today's class, we're getting deep into the hips. So you'll feel opening and stretching through the quads, which are the fronts of your thighs, your hamstrings, the backs of your thighs, the outer hips, the inner groins. Um, we're just doing, doing it the whole class. Today, we only need a couple of props. So either one or two yoga blocks or a stack of books. If you're in a pretty tight body and it's difficult for you to sit the way I'm sitting right now, you might need more books. Eventually we'll be sitting on them if we have time for it towards the end of class. Okay, so we're gonna get started lying down on your back as, as we usually do with open awareness yoga. So lie down with the knees bent, feet on the floor. Make yourself comfortable. Arms along the side of the body. Adjust what you need to. And then take a few deep breaths. Inviting your experience and your awareness into your body and into your yoga practice today. And pull your right knee into your chest. Interlace your fingers just right at the top of the shin. And lengthen your left leg long down to the end of the mat. Take a few breaths here, in and out through the nose. And then using the strength in your arms, move your right knee in circles. So we're just gliding the thigh bone in the socket of the hip. I call this the butter churn. I don't actually think it's how butter churns work. If I remember my one experience churning butter as a child, I think it involves Ziploc bags. Change the direction of the circles that you're making. Maybe more like mortar and pestle. And then hug the right knee back into the chest. And let's cross it over towards the left shoulder, so just across the body. You might, for extra credit, take your right hand and reach down towards your buttocks, finding your sitting bone. So you're really like grabbing the buttocks and pulling it down towards the ground. So you're drawing both ends of your thigh in opposite directions. Deep breath into the low belly. All right, right knee back to the right shoulder. Place your right foot down on the ground and pull your left knee into the chest. Slide the right leg long. Take a few deep breaths. Ekapada Apanasana. And now the um, poorly named butter churn. Let's take circles in one direction with that left knee. Breathing, noticing, slowing down, and now changing direction. See if you can turn all the muscles of your leg and your hip off and just wiggle your leg around with your arm muscles. All right, pull the left knee back in and then cross it over the body, left knee to right armpit. And you can do that same thing, holding the left side sitting bone and drawing it down towards the ground as you bring your knee across the body. Deep breaths into the pelvic floor. That's the base of your torso. All right, bring the left knee back to center. Place the left foot on the floor. Slide your right foot up to meet it. And now cross the right knee, or right ankle over the left knee. We're not 
We're not bringing the knee into the chest. We're gonna drop the right foot over to the left. Foot flattens on the floor. Keep the right knee pointing up to the sky. If this hurts your knee, adjust your body so that it doesn't. And if you don't feel much of anything, you might scoot that left knee further over to the left. So you'll walk your foot further over to the left side. And what we're going for is some sensation through the outer left thigh hip area. And just breathe here. Figure four, twist. Notice what you're working with in your hips today. All right, to come out of this safely, just uncross the right leg, bring it back to the floor, foot to the floor, and then pull the left foot up to meet it. And change sides, cross the left ankle over the right thigh, and then drop the left foot to the right side. So you're letting both of the knees fall to the right. Left knee stays pointing up towards the sky, and to deepen this, scoot your right knee further to the right, step your foot out further to the right, and breathe. What we really don't want during class today is any knee pain. And sometimes when we're working with the hips, because oftentimes folks' hips are really tight, then the knee starts to want to rotate or get involved. So always back out. Back out if you start to feel something in your knee. We don't want to work the knee in that way. We want to work the hips. So we have to work our own edge. Here, uncross the left foot, bringing it back flat to the floor, and then lifting the right foot up to meet it. Pull both of your knees into the chest for a moment. And then place both of the feet back down on the ground. Now take your left foot, step out a little wider than the left hip, like the left side of the mat, and bring the arms out to the side of the body, out like a T or goalpost arms. Now you'll take this right leg and slowly let the knee open to the right, like a half butterfly leg. As you exhale, very slowly draw the right knee back up to the ceiling. So we're just working with the right leg for now. As you inhale, very slowly release the right knee down towards the ground. You'll roll onto the outer edge of the right foot when you do so and very slowly bring that right knee back up to center. Train your minds on the inner right thigh groin area and notice what's sliding long as you drop the knee out to the side and what's sliding short as you engage the adductors, the inner thighs, to bring the knee back to center. The next time you drop that knee out to the right, leave it there. And now let's drop the left knee over to the right as well. So both knees in the same direction and what we call windshield wipers. Breathing here. And now bring both of those knees back up to center. Step the left heel in line with the sitting bone, and then step the right heel out to the right, about the right edge of the mat to get it out of the way. And now we'll change sides. So let your left knee fall very slowly, open to the left, coming onto the pinky toe side of that left foot. And with an exhale breath, very slowly lift that left knee back up to the sky. So we're a one-winged butterfly here, moving with the breath, moving very slow, noticing what's going on at the left inner thigh. What we're doing by moving so slowly in both directions is keeping some engagement in the muscle and the inner thigh muscles as we slowly drop the knee open to the left. So it's lengthening but engaging. And then as we pull the knee back to center, those muscles are shortening and engaging. Now the next time you drop that left knee over to the left, leave it there, and then follow with the right knee. Both knees dropped over to the left. Breathe. It's 
starting slow. We're being good to our hips because we'll ask them to open up for us. Now bring both of those knees back up to center and we'll do butterfly with both feet. So bring both of your feet together and very slowly let both of your knees fall open. Leave them there for a moment. Lift up your buttocks, scoot it towards your heels, place it back down on the ground. Notice how far your knees are away from the ground. And now very, very slowly bring the knees back up to center. And you might notice a little bit of shaking and quaking. Just be curious. And we'll drop the knees back out to the side. Go very slowly, don't let them plunk. We wanna control the lengthening and opening of the inner thighs. Continue. We'll do two more passes. And when you're done with your second pass, you'll just let the knees stay open in butterfly. Baddha Kanasana is a Sanskrit name, and it actually means bound angle. And just notice as you are resting in your Supta Baddha Kanasana, how it feels different from when you first entered the shape, and maybe your knees are a different distance away from the ground. All right, pull those knees back together. Hug them into the chest. We'll take a happy baby here. So at the beginning of class, it might not be super deep. Bring the soles of the feet to the sky. Separate the knees wider than your hips. And either hold on to the thighs or the outer shins or the outer feet. And we're just pulling the knees down towards the floor on either side of the waist. And let's rock slowly side to side. Maybe you feel the weight of your leg drawing you down to one side and that shifting ebb and flow as you rock right to left. And come back to the center. Keep the knees where they are. Lower your heels down towards your groin. If you can reach your ankles or your feet, hold on and then press your knees away from you. So we're opening up the hips here too. Kind of like we're in a seated Baddha Konasana, if you've done that pose before, but just lying on our back. Take a deep breath into the pelvic floor, send it low, exhale all of the air out. Wrap your arms around the outer legs and pull your legs together. One last stretch here on the floor. Cross the right leg all the way over the left so that your thighs touch. Then take an overhand grip on your shins and pull them towards your face. We're going for a stretch somewhere in the right buttocks. Breathe here, shoelace stretch. You might have noticed there's some areas in your body where you feel tighter, some where you feel looser. Interesting to know those things about yourself. So the hips are connected into the low back. And there are many of us who deal with low back stuff from time to time, myself included. And we'll change sides. Left leg over the right. Take an overhand grip on your shins and pull them in towards the face. So we're tying the legs in a knot. You don't have to go any deeper than when you start feeling the stretch that you like. There's really no goal other than feeling better, opening the body, finding ourselves in this moment with our breath, taking some time, doing something good. 
One more deep breath here, in and out. And then uncross the legs, pull the knees into the chest one last time. And if you've got anything going on in your spine, roll to one side and sit up. Otherwise, rock and roll a few times along the spine until you build enough momentum to come up to seated. And then cross the legs in front of you. And we'll twist to the right. Place your left hand on the outer right knee, right fingertips behind you. Roll the right shoulder back and down, lift the spine. And then twist over to the left. Roll the left shoulder back and down, lift the spine. Come back forward, bring the hands in front of you and step into a tabletop on your hands and knees, all fours position. From here, step the right foot forward between the hands. Place the left hand down on the ground on the inner edge of the right foot and inhale, lift your right arm up to the sky. Open your chest to the right. Breathe. Feel that left hip, left quad open. Lean back from the navel, from the ribs, from the skull, and feel how that changes the feeling in your legs. Now let's toe heel the right foot over to the right slightly and bring the right hand down on the inside of the right foot. So we're moving towards a runner's lunge. Both of your hands are on the inside of the right leg. You can stay here. You might lower down to your elbows if you have the space, and you might curl your back toes under and lift your back knee off the ground. It's whatever works for your body right now. Drop your head, draw your shoulders away from the ears and breathe. Now if your back knee isn't off the ground, curl the toes under, lift the back knee off the ground, then come back onto your palms if you'd lower down. We're gonna transition here to the other side. So it's a quarter turn to your left, all 10 toes, turn to your left, crawl your hands through center, and then keep the momentum, move over to the left, turn your left toes out, and lower your right knee down to the ground. Plant the right hand down on the ground, and inhale, lift the left arm up to the sky. Breathe and be. Now the right quad is opening. You might also feel this in the left hip and leg. Lean back from the navel, ribs, and skull. Feel how that changes the expression of this shape in your legs. Breathe. Now we toe heel the left foot over to the left and lower the left hand on the inside of the foot, staying like this or lowering down to the elbows or lifting the back knee. Any variation of this that works for you, where you feel something, is the right shape. Let your head hang, move the shoulders away from the ears, breathe. If your back knee is down, curl the toes under, lift it up, come back up to your palms, and then press down into your palms and your right toe. Step the left leg back to meet the right. Plank pose. And lift your hips downward facing dog. Take a deep breath in. And a deep breath out. And at any time during practice, you can rest in a child's pose. Knees down to the ground, hips to heels, forehead to the earth. We'll start moving a little bit more now. Warming up. Bend your knees, look between the hands, and as you exhale, walk your feet forward to the hands, forward fold. Bring your hands to your outer shins, inhale, lengthen your spine up halfway, so your torso is parallel with the earth. Exhale to lower back down into your fold, you can bend the knees if you need to. Press down into your feet, point your tailbone between the heels, and inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, roll your shoulders back and line up the crown of your head directly over your tailbone. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Hinge at your hips, bend the knees if you need to. 
Hands on the outer shins. Inhale, come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plank pose. Step it back long. Inhale into your plank. Exhale, lower your knees down to the ground and lower all the way down to the earth. Point back through your feet. Inhale, lift your chest, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Make your way back and up. Inhale here. Exhale, walk your feet forward to the hands, fold down. Hands to the outer shins, inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold back down. Press down into your feet. Inhale, come all the way up to standing and reach the arms overhead. Exhale, release your hands by the side of the body. One more time. Inhale, arms lift overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plank pose. Inhale. Exhale, lower your knees and come all the way down to the ground. Inhale, baby cobra, lift your heart, spread your collarbones. Exhale, downward facing dog. Deep breath in. Exhale, walk your feet forward, fold in. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold down. Inhale, all the way up to standing, arms reach. Exhale, release your hands. We're changing it up, Surya B, or C. Inhale, lift the arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Here's where we change. Exhale, plant your hands and step your left foot back to the end of the mat. Lower your left knee down to the ground. Inhale, lift your arms to the sky and bring your shoulders over your hips. Low lunge, exhale here. Point your tailbone down towards the ground. Inhale, look up, lift your heart. Exhale, lower your hands on both sides of the right foot. Curl the left toes under, lift the left knee off the ground. And step back, downward facing dog. Inhale into your down dog. As you exhale, bring the left foot forward between the hands and lower the right knee down to the ground. Inhale, lift the shoulders over the hips, arms overhead, exhale, stay. Point the tailbone down, inhale, lift your heart, look up. Exhale, lower your hands, curl your right toes under, lift the right knee off the ground, it's different here. Step the right foot forward to meet the left, fold down. Inhale, come up halfway, hands to outer shins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, arms overhead. This time, look up. Exhale, release your hands by the side of the body. One more time. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, this time, right foot steps back behind you. Keep the right knee off of the ground. Press down into the left foot and the right toes. Hug the belly in towards the spine, and as you inhale, bring the shoulders over the hips, arms reach to the sky, high lunge, Anjaneyasana. Inhale here, exhale, lower the hands, step back, plank pose. You can skip this, head to down dog or a child's pose, or exhale, lower all the way down to the ground. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, step the right foot forward. Plant down through the right foot and the left toes. Hug the outer hips in, hollow the navel, and inhale. Lift your shoulders over your hips, arms reach to the sky. One more deep breath in here. This is different. As you exhale, plant your hands and step left foot forward to meet the right, fold down. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, fold down and in. Inhale, come all the way up, arms overhead. Exhale, release your hands by the side body. Bring your hands to your heart, close your eyes. Smooth out your breath. Meet yourself once more as you did in the beginning of your practice.
Soften your shoulders. Unlock your knees. Feel the freedom in your hips and back when you unlock the knees. Blink your eyes open. Take a quarter turn to the left and step your feet apart wide. Bring your hands to the hips. From the right hip socket, turn the entire right leg out, angle the left toes in. We'll head slowly step by step into a trikonasana or triangle pose. We won't use any props for this one. So bump your hips back to the left and feel that right sitting bone underneath you reaching directly back away from the back of the right knee. And then inhale, bring the shoulders back up. Exhale, shift the hips back, lean slightly forward over that right hip crease. Exhale, come up. Inhale, hold. Exhale, down and stay. Now release the right hand down to wherever it touches on the shin or the thigh. Left hand straight up to the sky. Bring the right rib cage forward. Open the left side chest to the sky and look up at your left hand. Now if that causes any pain in the neck, you can look down at the right foot. We're in Uttita Trikonasana, extended triangle pose. Feel that right sitting bone lifting and reaching away from the back of the right knee. We're stretching through the hamstrings, some of the adductors, ADD ductors. Now reach up with the left hand, inhale, come back to standing. Release your hands to your hips and change sides. From deep within the left hip socket, turn the left leg out, angle the right toes in. Now we bump the hips back to the right, leaning over the left hip crease. Reaching that left sitting bone away from the back of the left knee and inhale to come back up where we started. Exhale, lean like a little teapot. Inhale, come back up. This time we head down and stay. Exhale, lean. Really reach that sitting bone away from the back of the knee and then release the left fingertips to the left leg, right fingertips to the sky. Bring the left side ribs forward, roll the right side chest open and maybe look up, maybe look down. Do what your body needs and not what you think the pose is supposed to be. It's supposed to be for you. Now breathe. Reach up with the right fingertips and inhale, come all the way up to standing. Bring the hands to the hips and parallel the feet. This is a little bit different. So if you have some trouble reaching the floor, you might use your books in your hands as arm extenders. We'll hinge forward and bring the fingertips down to the ground. Now right away, you're gonna bend deeply into that right knee, shift your hips over to the right, lift the left toes, point them straight up to the sky and drop your hips down as far as you can. Your right heel might lift off the ground. Stretch your arms forward to help you lengthen through the spine, skandasana. Now we try to keep the hips low, we'll come through center to the other side. So press down into your right foot, flatten your left foot, be like a spider, keep the hips low, bend into your left knee, lift the right toes straight up to the sky. Now you might be able to get your left elbow and arm on the inner left thigh and help open that knee. Now we'll come back. Keep the hips low, crawl through center, right knee bent, left toes to the sky. Keep the hips low, crawl through center, left knee bent, right toes to the sky. A few more times, keep the hips low, crawl through center, maybe release your hands out to a T. Maybe keep the hands out to the T as you shift over to the other side. Always feel like a ninja doing this. Now let's come right back to center and straighten the legs. Fold down. And when I say straighten the legs, maybe your legs stay bent, and that's okay too. You're just working towards straight. <sighs> Breathe. And if you need a break, head to a child's pose. Your breath should be smooth and in control. If it's not, it means you need a break. Now bring the fingertips of the books back down to the ground and inhale, come up halfway. You bring your torso parallel to the earth. Press down through the feet, hug the navel into the spine, lift your hands to your hips. 
Pull your elbows together behind you and inhale, come up to standing. We're heading to the Urbhadrasana one or warrior one from here. So take a turn to your right, angle the right toes forward and step your left leg over to the left slightly. Bend into your right knee. Hands still on the hips, the legs are in warrior one. Inhale, lift your left arm up to the sky and then reach up through that left arm to lift and lengthen the left side body and deepen the stretch in the top of this left hip crease. Press down through the left heel, inhale, exhale. Keep the left arm to the sky, right hand on the hip. As you inhale, straighten through the right leg. Keep both of your legs straight, breathe in. Next, exhale, hinge right at the hip crease. Bring your torso parallel to the floor. Anytime you can release the left hand to your hip or maybe you keep reaching that left arm forward to lengthen the left side of your body, reach the right hip back, breathe. You might leave your hands on your hips or you might swing the left arm behind you, uh, palm facing in towards the body. Roll the left shoulder open and then reach the right arm behind you too. Inhale into the collarbones. Squeeze the shoulder blades behind the back. Point the tailbone directly behind you. Now bring your hands to your hips. Inhale, lift your shoulders over your hips and turn to the left twice. <laughs> so now we're turning to the other side. Left toes facing forward. Right toes are angled to the front right corner of the mat. And your feet should be decent distance apart from one another for comfort. Bend into your left knee. We have Virabhadrasana one legs. Our torso is oriented forward over that left knee. Inhale, lift the right arm up to the sky and reach up through that right arm to lengthen the right side body. Press down through the right heel so we're reaching to the sky and into the earth, this polarization this uniquely human experience of connecting to the energy of creativity through our human body that's of the earth, that returns to the earth when we no longer need it. Now inhale to straighten the left knee and deepen the hip crease to fold forward halfway, torso parallel to the earth. You can release both hands to the hips if you need to. Maybe you keep reaching through that right arm and reach the left hip back to deepen the hip crease. Getting more into the hamstrings here. Swing the right arm behind you, palm facing to the left. Roll the, left the right shoulder away from the ground and reach the left arm back to match. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. Breathe in. As you exhale, hands come to the hips. Inhale, lift the shoulders over the hips, and then turn to the right, parallel the feet. Now step or hop your feet, hips distance apart. Turn the toes slightly out. We're gonna come into a squat. So now if you have knee problems, you have a different pose that you're going to take. You're gonna leave the legs wide, turn the toes slightly out, bend the knees, and hold here. I promise you can do it. It's going to be some work, but you can do it. If your knees are okay for deep flexion, bring the fingertips down to the ground and squat the, knee, the hips between the heels. All right, we're going to change this up a little bit. Come up onto your toes, sit down on your heels, bring the knees parallel to the earth, and find some balance. Bring your hands to your knees. So shoulders are stacked over the hips, hands are on the knees. You can stay like this, you can stay in your squat, you may be in that horse stance with the knees wide and I trust that you can breathe and hold it. You might try and play around a little by lowering the right knee down to the ground, the midline of the body, and then lifting it back up. Lowering the left knee down, lifting it up. So as you lower the knee down, it crosses the body, taps to the floor, and then it lifts right back up, and we just change sides. You might try bringing the hands to the heart, playing with your balance, maybe reaching the arms overhead, maybe kind of finding a little genie action going on here. It can be fun. Ah, come back to center, bring your hands down to the ground, and then if you can, drop the heels down to the ground and sink your hips a little lower. 
Just a few more breaths in a traditional yogi squat, malasana. Hmm. All right, and if you're in that horse stance, stand up, straighten your legs, and we'll all head down to the ground. So any way that's comfortable for you, bring the buttocks down to the ground. So that was it for a lot of the hard work, the sweating work. Here we're moving into a series of stretches to continue our journey deep into the hips. So you might find your books, one or both of your books, and sit on top of them. Or if you have a yoga block, sit on top of that. What we want is to feel that that low back is not rounding like this, with the buttock tucked, on, tucked underneath us, but that we're on the tips of the sitting bones and there's a lift through the low back. So that's why we use the books. If you can sit flat on the floor and find that lift in your low back, that's fine. Here we're taking Uba Vista Konasana first. So it's a straddle. Open the legs to a big V. Turn the toes straight up to the sky. Bring your fingertips behind you. Roll the shoulders back and inhale to lift your heart, lengthen the spine. Now the very backs of the legs, the hamstrings, backs of the knees, and, and the calves are flat to the floor. So make sure that those toes are facing up to the sky, that they're not moving behind you or forward. Now some of us might feel a deep stretch just working the legs towards straight here. Some of us might be able to fold a little deeper, but I don't want you to fold by rounding the spine and reaching the crown of the head. We hinge right at the hips, so we keep the length in the spine. So bring the hands forward if you're heading into that fold. Inhale, reach the heart long, keep the spine long, and crease the hips a little bit more. Walking your fingers forward until you start to feel your body rounding and then back off a little bit and lengthen the spine. Be true to this and this version of this shape. Now it's not wrong to round the spine every time. There's always reasons to practice in different ways, but right now I suggest you keep that spine long and breathe. Shoulders move away from the ears. Reach the low back ribs away from the hips. Toes still pointing towards the sky. Deep breath into the low belly pelvic floor. Let all the air out when you exhale. Don't hold on to any of it. And because our spine is long already, we can just sit the shoulders back over the hips. All right, so reach on the inner knee, bend the knees up, and bring the feet together, knees open wide. So Baddha Konasana, we've been in this shape, just lying down on our backs. You bring the hands to the feet, and then slide the heels in a little closer towards the books or towards your groin. Open the soles of the feet to the sky to release your knees closer down towards the ground and then lengthen from inner groins to inner knees. Use the hands on the feet to help lift and lengthen the spine. Again, some folks might stay upright, others might hinge right at the hip crease, reaching the sternum forward. We're not rounding, not making some sort of um, a, a Halloween cat shape in our spine. It's called spinal flexion. We're keeping the spine long with its natural curves. Shoulders move away from the ears. Relax your jaw. Again, lengthen from inner groins to inner knees. Breathe. And inhale to come back up. Bring your hands underneath your knees. Bring your knees together. 
And let's lengthen the legs just to stretch out behind the knees. You might bounce the knees. And here we'll move into supta, or a half supta virasana. That probably doesn't mean anything to you yet. Um, and there's a lot of steps. Everybody's body is very different. So step one, can you bring your right foot to the outer right hip? So that's going to be on the outside of your books and the outside of the hip. I'll show you from this side. If you cannot bring that right knee behind you, stack your books up higher and higher until you can get it behind you. This already might be a deep stretch for your quad. You might be able to get rid of the books and sit your hips flat on the floor and keep that leg behind you. Just depends on your body. Then you'll straighten the left leg out. If you're not feeling much of anything here, there is more for you. Okay, so only if you need more, only if you don't feel anything here, lean your arms behind you. If you're still open and the body is asking for a deeper stretch, lift your buttocks, scoot it forward, place it back down on the floor, so you're tucking your tail under, and then lower down to your elbows. Any knee pain, stop, back out, go to a level before the one that you're at. If none of these work for you, you can take a low lunge again, like at the beginning of class, and that'll help you stretch open the quads to prepare the body in the future for something like this. And for those of you super flexible folks or folks that practice yoga every day, you might lay all the way down onto your back. You don't want knee pain. You don't want back pain. You can always try things. Use your strength to get yourself out of sticky situations. And here, breathe, no matter where you are. Close your eyes and slow down your breath. Let your body open at its own pace. No need to be anything else. We use yoga to crawl into our experience, not to get away from our experience. It's only by embodying and inhabiting fully that reality that we have the full strength of our power to create a life we move forward into. Moving from truth to creativity. All right, now if you're laying all the way back and down, or <laughs> you'll have to press into your elbows, use some strength to lift yourself back up, bringing your shoulders over your hips. Everybody rock onto the outer left hip to free the right leg and bring it out in front. You can take your hands into karate chops on either side of your knee, inner and outer knee, and just rub, creating some warmth and some friction. And we'll change sides. Okay, so this time the left leg moves behind you on the outer left hip on the outside of your books. Stack yourself up as high as you need to and sit still, breathing into this quad stretch. Or as we did on the other side, maybe you move down to the hands behind you or the elbows or flat on your back. But just be sure if you're heading down that you lift the buttocks, scoot the tailbone, and forward in front of you to lengthen the low back as you make your descent. Don't force anything here. Sometimes I have um, one knee that just hurts. It just hurts sometimes in this shape. And as much as I want to ignore that it's hurting and just do the pose anyway, that's really not a yoga practice that serves me. It's a yoga practice that hurts me. And that's not finding balance. That's not, why would I practice hurting myself? You know, I'm pretty good at that when I'm not practicing. <laughs> we can be really hard on ourselves. I know I can be hard on myself and I'm not trying to cultivate more of that in my yoga practice and I hope you aren't either. So find a place where you can bear it where it's just pushing your edge out gracefully. Don't want to bully ourselves. 
and slow down the breath. Let the body open. Okay, if you head it all the way down, you press down into your elbows to come up to them. Then lift up onto your hands to bring your shoulders over your hips. Everybody roll to the right side to take off all the weight of the left side to lengthen your left leg in front of you. And then take those palms and make some friction on the inner and outer left knee. All right. We'll head into our grand finale, which for some will be a figure four stretch, and that's perfect. For others, it might be um, Supta Padan Gustasana three. So come to lay down on your back, knees bent, feet on the floor. And just take a moment to settle the body in this shape. If your knees are in pain or feeling a little achy from that deep flexion, straighten your legs out and just hang out there and, until and if you feel ready to, to practice some more. Not, you might just take your shavasana. If you're ready to move on, you'll take that right ankle, cross it over the left knee. We've done this before in class. Take your right hand and press your right thigh further away from you. Now, if you're feeling a deep stretch already, stay here. This is version one, and it's a great version to be in. Maybe you pull the left knee into the chest and Maybe this is where you stay, version two. Use the right elbow to press the right leg away from the face. So figure four stretch, you've probably done this before. You certainly have if you've been taking my class. And there's a way though to make this even more advanced to deepen the outer hip stretch that we're getting. So if it feels like you want to move on, you'll take your hands and hold on to the lower right leg. Right hand on right knee, left hand on right foot, okay? Hold your leg where it is and lower your left foot down to the ground. Now move that right knee open and close just a little bit, massaging the right thigh in the hip socket. And then we'll hold on right beneath the knee on the lower thigh to press the knee away from the face and pull your foot towards the face. So we're bringing the shin towards, par or towards like uh, parallel with the short side of the mat. Now this might be where you stay. You might head back to variation two or variation one, or maybe we head forward, depending on how you're feeling, all right? So if that's you, bring the right knee into the right elbow crease, hold onto the shin with the right hand, all right? This is our base. Then we're gonna take the left hand and slide the foot into the crook of the left elbow and hold onto the shin with the left hand. So here we are. If any knee pain, don't do this, back out. If you're feeling okay here, maybe you straighten the left leg long. Reach out through the ball of the left big toe. So you're really reaching through that left leg lowering the left thigh down towards the ground. This is awesome as it is. If you're all the way here, bring your right shoulder up higher so that it's level with the left shoulder. We're working our abs too. And if you're still along for the ride, take your right hand, reach it behind the head so your head rests in the crook of the right elbow, and maybe you can grab the right toes with your left fingers. Okay, take another deep breath wherever you are. And listen closely. I'm going to reverse this out safely. If you're holding on to the foot, bring your right hand back to the leg as we set it. The knee is in the elbow. Hand holds the shin. Bend your left knee. Place the left foot down on the ground. Now slowly slide your right foot down the arm to the right hand. Now lay your head and shoulders down on the ground. Hold on to your right knee with the right hand and very slowly straighten the right leg up to the sky. We can all do this. Bring the right foot down to the ground. Awesome. 
If you are holding figure four, stretch. You're here too, both feet on the floor, and we change sides. So see, it's a step-by-step -step process, and you might think, ha, huh, years ago I couldn't do any of this. It's just practice, all right? It's not some natural thing in my body. Um, certainly not this, this particular stretch. So cross the left ankle over the right knee and press the left thigh away from the face. This might be it for you. You might feel a nice stretch. You might hang out here and breathe. Or you might pull the right knee into the chest. Use your left elbow to press the left thigh away from you. And we're in figure four stretch. This might be the perfect stretch for you right now. If you're moving on, Hold on to the left lower leg with your hands. Left knee, left hand on the knee, right hand on the foot. Now lift up and, grab, and bring your left inner elbow to the left knee. Hold on to the left shin with the left hand. You're still holding on to your left foot with the right hand. Place the right foot down on the ground. Either stay here, moving that left knee open and closed a few times. Or perhaps you can bring your left foot into the inner right elbow and then hold on to your shin with the right hand. This might be it for you. Or maybe you straighten the right leg long, reaching out through the ball of the right big toe. So the right leg is straight, back of the right thigh pressing down. And you might stay here. Or you might take that left hand Bring it behind the head, rest your head in the crook of the left elbow, and maybe grab the left big toe with the left fingers. I know we're in a total pretzel right now. There's a lot of rights and lefts. This will be on repeat on my YouTube channel if you want to try again, if it was too confusing this time. All right, so to safely get out of this, release the left hand, left knee back in the left elbow crease, bend the right knee, place the right foot on the ground, slowly slide the left foot down the right arm, hold on to the left foot with the right hand and lower your head and shoulders down. And everybody straighten the left leg up to the sky. And then bend the left knee, place the foot on the floor. You might have had enough. You might be ready for one more shape. The deepest in the hips, right? This shape is nice, it's a bridge pose. So the feet are hips width distance apart. Hands along the side of the body, palms face down. Roll the shoulders underneath you. Press down into the feet and as you inhale, lift your hips up off the ground. Reach your knees forward over your toes. And then one more time, roll your shoulders further underneath you. You might interlace your fingers underneath your buttocks. Press the arms down to lift the sternum towards the chin. Relax the neck. Relax the throat. Reach your tailbone between the knees. Take one more deep breath in. And exhale. Slowly lower the hips down to the floor. Hug your knees into the chest. Rock side to side on your low back. And if there's any stretch or any shape that you want to make before you feel done with your practice, do that now. And if you're ready, you'll come into your Shavasana. So lengthen your legs down the end of the mat. Feet wider than your hips. Bring your palms face up along the side of the body and tuck your shoulder blades underneath you. Feel the back of your head heavy. Soften your jaw. Soften your tongue. Relax your throat. Let your shoulder blades melt into the floor. Release your spine. Relax your buttocks, feel them spread.
Feel your calves spread and melt. Let go of any effort and rest completely. Shavasana. Begin to deepen your breath, feeling my body stretch from the inside out. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Reach the arms overhead. Walk the feet together and stretch in one long line. And then place your feet on the floor and roll over to one side. Resting on your side for a breath or two. Press your palms down into the ground and sit up. And cross the legs in front of you. You might come to sit back up on your books. And if you remember what it felt like to be seated for that split second we were seated at the beginning of class. Maybe it feels different now with the hips open, the work that you've just done. Bring your palms to touch in front of the heart. As you inhale, lift your heart and leave it high. Exhale, bow your chin to your chest. Just finishing your practice bringing it to a full completion with the bow. And if you'd like, taking a moment to share good thoughts, good energy, good vibes, prayers, love, whatever, with our world, with our communities, our families, ourselves. And thank you for practicing with me. Please let me know if you have any questions um, or any requests for future practices. And you can practice again with me on Thursday at 530 Pacific. Very gentle. We don't really sweat in that class. Bye.